Hello guys, welcome back to another video. I don't know you, but recently I feel so tired because, well, there are a lot of things happening in the world right now. But I decided to create a new application to motivate myself with some positive uh, words and messages. However, I got a problem. Uh, I don't want to create a notification or reminder to opening the app every day. So this should be a way to display my information in the home screen. Yeah, there it is. Today, we're going to talk about widgets in iOS. My name is Pete and this, this is Swift and Tips. First of all, what are widgets? They are special extensions uh, to an or app that are capable to display concrete information in lock screen and from iOS 14 now available for home screen too. There are multiple features that confirm a widget, but today we will check just uh, some of the most important, for example, families, entries and timelines. There are three types of families that are actually the different types of sizes for each widget, small, medium, and large. Depending on how much info you want to provide to the user in your widget, you can choose one size or another. The way widgets provide information is through something called timeline. Timeline will manage the way how to update your widget by a reload policy and an input called entries, which is the actual data coming from your main app that can be used by your widget too. About reload policy, there are three types. Attend, which once all your entries were rendered, timeline will start over with a new series of entries and keep updating your widget for undefined time. Also, Regardless of the actual order of entries, you can specify a special policy to force an update after a particular period of time. Finally, you have never policy that basically won't update your widget. So it will be your responsibility to execute that reloading by Widget Center Singleton. One more thing to clarify. Widgets are not mini apps or something like that. So Please stay away of heavy loadings or custom animations in your widgets. So keep them as lightly as possible and bring your user a great experience with that. You don't want a user waiting a lot of time in your home screen you know, with an activity indicator because you made a huge uh, complex uh, operation there. So yeah, stay aware of that. So now that we understand the basics of widgets, Let's start with the actual implementation. I already started a small application that display a list of positive quotes. I would call it awesome quotes. And we have a basic interaction with a list of quotes and a detail about who is the author of a specific quote. So how can we then create a widget based on this application? For that, we'll use a new framework that Apple introduced in WWDC 2020. It is Widget Kit. Let's create a new target from Xcode. Type a name from your widget and for now uncheck the intent option. If you may wonder what are intents, it's basically a configuration for a widget that user can select uh, what information want to display uh, in the widget instead of the system doing that automatically. However, for now, we will focus on the creation of the widget. Now we need to activate our target. Remember that a target is a product built from a set of configuration. For example, dev and production configurations. But for now, mm, let's just activate uh, our widget target. Here, Xcode has created the default code for us. 
let's explore it. First, we have our timeline provider, which uh, are delegates that will tell the system what are the entries for our widget and how to build the actual timeline. Placeholder sets a dummy entry when the widget is loading the content. Snapshot helps to provide data in tracing situations, like preview selecting a type of widget. And the most important, the timeline setup, which provides an, an array of timeline entries to update a widget. Here we can choose the reload policy and how many items per timeline will be configured. Next up, we have the entry model, which is basically the model object that holds the information provided by the main app. This object always comes with a date property to tell the timeline when is the correct time to appear in the widget. You can also add more properties for, from your domain, but they should be always present. Next, we have the widget UI. Here, like a regular Swift UI app, you can configure the view using stacks, images, text, etc. Just remember that you can use scrolling objects like scroll view or list. Also, depending on the family types you want to support, you can display different views according to the situation. Finally, the actual widget configuration. There are two types of configuration, static or intense. Static is for widgets that don't require any extra configuration from the user or anything else. Just with the timeline provider and entries is enough to do the job. Many of the widgets will use this setup. But if you require that users select what info to display in the widget, for example, the weather widget um, selecting which city I'm interested, or the stock widget um, if I want to track a particular company, those are perfect cases for intent configuration. Both configurations require parameters to set up the widget. Kai, which is an identifier for the widget, the provider, which is the timeline provider, and content, which is our UI. Here you can set up the display name a description for your widget, what are the supported families, etc. And also previews are supported like a regular Swift UI app. By the way, if you want to create a widget in iOS, it doesn't matter if your main app is using UIKit. The only way to do it is through Swift UI. So it's a great way to motivate you to learn more about it. Enough talking, let's configure our widget. The first step is uh, marking all the files we want to use to be part of the widget target. However, if you need to share data across multiple extensions in your app, for example, from database, you should create app groups from Apple Developer Portal. But for now, don't worry about it. We will keep things simple. Next, let's create some folders to organize uh, our project a little bit. I will divide this huge file into three sections. Entries, providers, and widget view.
For entries, we will use our quote model as a property. That's it for this file. Let's move to the timeline provider. Let's start with placeholder. For our demo, we will return a dummy entry here. This entry is the base to render a placeholder view when widget is still loading resources. Next is a snapshot. We will use the same entry for this particular example. By the way, you may notice that snapshots and timeline methods return a closure. This allows us to make a synchronous call if we require it. Uh, just make sure those calls are lightweight and fast. Enter is a timeline. We will configure the arrays of entries. For this particular demo, we will create a timeline of four random quotes that will update our widget every certain amount of time. Let's put five minutes of uh, reload just for illustration. By the way, 5 minutes is the minimum amount of time you can set up for reloads between entries. Don't try to reload your widget every 5 seconds. That won't work, believe me. I tried. Even if that were legal, you will drain the battery so fast. Remember, that's not your app during those updates, but the operating system. Okay, before leaving, let's use at end policy for our demo. Finally, our view. We can create a new view for our widget. But let me show you that we can reuse code from the main app too. So let's use instead quote cell to render our widget. Cool. We are so close to run our widget. Let's update our configuration file. And don't forget to add the supporter families. Let's add the three families for now. You can also set up your previews with your supported families without running the simulator. Alright, let's run our app and select a widget, like a real device. It's cool, but I don't know you, looks like a small family is too small for our demo and large one is uh, wasting a lot of space. Let's fix that by removing the small from the configuration and adding a new view for the large widgets. Let's again reuse code from main app by calling quote detail in our large widget. To choose which view use depending on the family type, let's use an environment object called widget family and create a switch in our body. All right, let's run again. Pretty nice. Our first widget is finally made. Congratulations. As a last step, look at this. 
When you tap your widget, you are redirected to call tab. That's cool, but we can do it better. Let's add support for deep linking in our app and widget. The quotes are ready with a schema URL property. But we need to set up from project settings and URL type that match the quotes URL from the app site. Then we need to wrap our widgets in a link view that requires an URL for deep link. That URL is a property from our web entry. We just link here because we support medium and large families, and those can contain more than one link per view. But if you only support uh, the small widget, then your choice is widget URL modifier. Back to main view in our app, we need to support on open URL modifier to get the actual URL that was invoked. Let's set up this. That's it. Let's try again. Great. Now our app supports deep link to our widget. Awesome. There are many design guidelines you should follow to create awesome widgets. I will leave you a link in the description about a talk from WWDC 2020. Also, remember that I always put in the description a link to the code done in all the sessions. Also, I know there is a lot of things to talk about widgets. We didn't cover things like smart stacks, intents, um, integration with Siri, etc., etc. But I would like to know if you are interested about it. If that's the case, please leave a comment below and yeah, that helped me to understand that you want more videos about it. Also, before leaving, I would like to say thank you for all the subscribers and all your likes because, well, that makes me uh, feel great about that I'm doing so good content for you. So yeah, keep going with that and don't forget to share the video and follow me on social media, you know, Swift and Tips and Pit 500. For now, that's it for me and thank you so much for watching my video. Talk to you soon.